so, whatever it's out. All right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start the so we'll start this off uh, as you price on the email uh, earlier last week. Uh, sent out an agenda and just what we would go over. This meeting is really just an overview and what this commission is and just some things that the city is currently uh, doing at the moment. Okay. Uh, so I thought uh, that we will all introduce ourselves to each other. Uh, so I'm Mike Rizzantello, I'm the city administrator. Hey, I'm Jeff Lambert, I work down at Andy's Market. Scott Peters, from BREA. And Jason now at the Home Depot. Uh, and then others on here is Bill Quammins with Pacific Power and then Daryl. Uh, David Wilson, who is the uh, Walla Walla Valley Chamber of Commerce president, he has an ex officio seat on here, so he's now in Bowdoin. And then our finance director is as well, because uh, we'll be working on several things that may have a financial ramification to him, because we're looking at doing a loan grant program for College Avenue Core businesses and things like that. So as uh, that develops, we'll bring folks in. Uh, first order businesses for this body, we need to have a vote for a chair and a vice chair. So I don't know, so I don't know if, I, if who we want to be a uh, chair and vice chair for the committee. I think it's really easy. Daryl and Bill get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so I think that I second that. <laughs> you know what I mean? You missed the first meeting, guys. You got extra work. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> I think that sounds good, though. <laughs> well, we could all yeah. wait till we get a full sure. full, full meeting next meeting. month. And sure. Then you do that. You know. Well, and I, I can't be here at the April meeting. You listed oh, in okay. here. I already know I've got a, a conflict that night. So okay. which which date was the April one? I didn't even look at sixth. Well, I can make that one. Yeah. So sorry. I was I was trying to read all this before yeah. I got to the meeting. Well, I got to check my calendar. Uh oh, can't do that. I was in Vegas. Our store manager's meeting is in Vegas, and it came across on my phone because my emails come to my phone, and I pull it up and I flip through and I see a couple pages. So I'm like, all right. So I got back to the office and I just hit print without even looking. I look down. I'm like, what? What? What did Mike send us? <laughs> a lot. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so uh, next I'll go over the purpose of the commission. It's a recommend city council economic development goals, policies, and strategy, and incentives help strengthen the local economy, assist with the recruitment of new businesses, and then liaison to existing businesses. So I try to get out there and meet with everyone, uh, but I'm only one person. There's quite a few businesses in here, so. Uh, I really view this commission as where you're all ambassadors, where if there is a concern or something, let us know and the city will be able to deal with it. Um, event coordination, recommend development of a tourism plan, because I'm sure as you all know, uh, city historically has been pretty insular in that fashion, so we're, we're trying to get extra visitors into town here. And then review and comment on lodging tax proposals. Uh, this next item, I'll just go over briefly and you'll get uh, information from me at a later time on this. So per state RCW, any folks who are on a commission that votes on items, yes, go open meeting training. If you've already been to an open meeting training in the last two years, uh, you could just send me an email with the certificate and we can put it in the file. Uh, otherwise, we'll uh, need you to attend one of those. Uh, we're creating several commissions to deal with various issues in the city, so we're going to try to uh, establish a general time to just have everyone in to watch it here. That way it can be done with. So uh, you'll hear from me uh, on that item probably uh, at the end of this week, and we'll establish a time in the next two weeks or so. 
Okay, so the next thing, uh, this is really what contributed to the PAC. Uh, I just want to go over some projects that have like an economic development nexus to only get them out there, uh, just so you're all aware. Um, the first one is the logo branding project. So that has been our logo for a number of years, or it has Whitman's face on it and the Whitman Monument. One of the things that has come out through the strategic planning online surveys and such is uh, a lot of folks have mentioned well, a lot of that isn't in the city proper and we need a new logo to reflect what college places currently. Uh, so we've actually partnered with the graphic design class over at the high school and they're currently uh, developing a new logo for the city. So in your packet that was in that, uh, just showing where they're going so far on that. Uh, any comments you all have on that would be greatly appreciated because uh, they're going to present the top uh, three logos probably at, at the last council meeting in April. And the idea with this is not only will this logo be what's on the wall over there, but we're going to be doing a wayfinding project. So we'll have signs that actually tell people where everything is at in town. And uh, the logo will be on top of that. And even on College Avenue, uh, something we did in Colfax is we actually had the logos painted in the middle of the intersections for every uh, cross street in the downtown part. So really it's an all-encompassing branding strategy. So from what you've seen so far, I'm curious, is there any comments on? I think well, there are some examples or something. Yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah. The, the one I like best, though, I almost, I like the admin, the one with the admin building okay. um, at Walla Walla University. The, I mean, so that's very, very much a part of yeah. college place, but it's also Walla Walla University. So right. that's my yeah. own, that's my only. No, uh, it's one of yeah. yeah, it's yeah, that's. You want to <laughs> allow college place. I don't even know if I don't know if we're even supposed to. Did you guys get that survey from that guy? Did, did any of y'all have to take that survey, or was that just me? Was I one of the ones selected about oh, you doing a survey oh, for the city? It lost in the yeah. yeah. So I was selected, and that's actually what I meant. Is was kind of I, I I like that the look of that one also, mm -hmm. but I but I agree with him when I, I think it's I feel at times, and I've only been here three years, four almost four years, so I no way get to talk about it like I've been here twenty years. But uh, I, I helped build the Walmart here when I was with Walmart. I run the the, the Home Depot. And it's always been uh, my impression that Walla Walla tries to Big Brother College Place a lot. So yeah, it just yeah. helps them get the Big Brother push if we put them in the logo. I mean, I'm, I'm just being honest. Yeah. Well, I think there needs to be a little bit of division, and uh, to to so because I'm, I'm hoping that this group uh, and and this you know administration is yeah. uh, working on the economic. I want to share growth with them, absolutely, but we got to focus on college places, growth, and economic development first, and it's got to be the priority number one, and if they get a little spillover, great, but because uh, the spillover doesn't ever seem to come this way, <laughs> is, is my yeah. impression. And I haven't been here but a few know, years. Up, so. up, up, and down, up and down Myra, I think as long as Myra develops, it's coming both directions, you know. It's gonna. That's. I think it will impact both yeah. directions. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I just. But I'm not. The problem is, that is an iconic look for yeah. college place. Yeah. I don't know what else is an iconic look for the community. The the only the only other thing that, that you'll see on some of the logo designs is they have the water tower very prevalent. Yeah, yeah. I saw that one. I just not. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't do it. Yeah, it doesn't. It, do doesn't, it, it doesn't. I like. I really do like the design. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and that's you know he's right. There's an iconic value yeah. to that picture. But you know I'm. What there was to that. Yeah. But yeah. But but I mean if you're dealing with a bunch of young kids, I might ask him to try to come up with something that's. Brand new. Yeah, yeah, brand new. You don't have to use a building or something in town. What can you do that's 
Is it beautiful that incorporates, you know, I, I love the comment, you know, college place, a city you want to live in. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's nice. Um, but, but now come up with something that's going to yeah. identify us. I mean, just something, you know, that we don't have already in place. Yeah. 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 Think about that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. To ask them to lean towards the view that they can see from College Place. <laughs> a view. There's a there's a tremendous value to just a view that you can see from a place. Doesn't have to be in that place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Anything on the you know, I'm going to work this morning and you get the 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 pink in the sky and you get the layers of the blues and a little bit of fog out and stuff like that. It's just it was a so great good. shot this morning. Yeah, it was a so great good. shot. That's a good point because yeah. that's the blues. I mean, we've been looking at the blues for years and we always go, man, that's just, it's just so cool. And that is you can see that from a lot of people's house and a lot of streets yeah, yeah. in this in this in this city. So. That's not a bad idea, right? yeah. I put that on paper and then five Exactly. Yeah, that, that makes a little more. Uh, hey, they're graphic design students. Make it work. Exactly. <laughs> You're done. <not. laughs> <laughs> well, that's real helpful feedback. I, I'll uh, craft, craft that and get that to them so they can work on some other alternatives. Oh, well, email if yeah. it comes to yeah. mine or yeah, something. Yeah, that'd be no. great. Yeah. Uh, that goes into the next thing, the wayfinding. I'll delve a little bit into that. So uh, a couple of years back, there was a regional wayfinding plan done. Uh, the, the big problem is that, uh, from what I can tell, they really delved deep into like all the communities that involved. And it looks very generic looking. So one of the things that the city is doing is we're actually working with uh, a group called the Rural Community Design Initiative out of Washington State University. And they're going to be conducting public workshops on what the wayfinding should look like. And it can relate to that plan, but it's just something with a little bit more of a college place flair to it. And the other thing is figuring out where the signage should go because with the plan that was uh, completed for the region, while it has some of the overarching things such as like the Whitman Monument, it is lacking on like the naming and nomenclature business districts. So for instance, I view like where Home Depot is as like the Myra Road C Street Business District. Uh, Walmart's Meadowbrook and downtown's downtown, but it doesn't, the plan that was done for the region doesn't really go to that effect. It didn't rock quite that deep. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're actually going to start having the, the public outreach for the wayfinding, where this Sunday actually they're uh, going to conduct a workshop on that from 1 to 4 p.m. here at City Hall. Uh, so definitely, if you want to attend, you're more than welcome to. That'll be here. And it's really to try to get our own identity and what needs to be listed on the wayfinding signs. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how much you've delved into that previous process, but the, there was a lot of work and a lot of money yeah. poured into that wayfinding project. And the, the signage that you know they recommended, the, the style, design, I like that a lot. I don't. I mean, it's not yeah. specific to any community. Yep. The, the specifics for the community are what's important and where yeah. you want to highlight. But but I I was very you know I was part of that yeah. through tourism visit Walla Walla and I I thought the end project or the end result of the project was really nice. So yeah, it, 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 as far as the ge the general look, it's good. The the big problem is really I think nomenclature and I've, linking together. Things. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and we never got to, to that stage of implementation for the, the nomenclature and how we were gonna you know name each one and the budgets and stuff like that. But but if you take that look and you work with it, I think you get something that's really classy to start off with. It's gonna be timeless. That's you know and and, and the ideas for the. You know whether they're the street signs or whether they're the walking signs. Uh, there's some good stuff there, I think. Okay. 
Uh, another thing which builds into this wayfinding workshop is uh, design development regulations uh, for the College Avenue corridor, and this is really for newer construction because uh, the city uh, spent a lot of money developing the College Avenue, but there has been some, some uh, developments that have been mentioned where he showed us a plan it was literally like plopping a trailer right alongside College Avenue with no door face in College Avenue and uh, it became a little bit of a concern for uh, the staff where the city put the money in trying to make this into a main street and if you're going to have boxcars and stuff like that uh, coming in to hear what does that mean. So as part of the contract with our CDI, uh, they're going to look at what that exactly would look like, what the development regulations would look like, what do we want along College Avenue. Uh, that will be at the same workshop, so this Sunday from 1 to 4. And they'll be doing urban design drawings and things like that. So, yeah. I think there's got to be some regulations before yeah. you will end up with box cars on the side. Yeah, and, and so far we've actually had two proposals for exactly that, which is uh, quite scary. <laughs> so I, I, I'm a little stunned because you'd think with the real estate market around here that they'd want to put something a little more substantial or something. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but... No, I'm, the, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah I am too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, another thing is development review process study and any feedback or comments that you could send my way on there would be uh, greatly helpful. So since I arrived here, uh, I've been uh, working on a lot of the development review projects and seeing what works and what doesn't. And I would say the timeliness on some of it has been an issue and some extra superfluous steps. Uh, I don't know if it's things that I've just witnessed or if that's common for here. So as you're talking with other folks who've developed in the, in the city or if you know of anything, please send it my way because we're trying to look at ways, we're trying to move to more of a lean methodology with it so we can move quicker. Uh, I don't know if you have any thoughts or comments on... Just that we've heard developers over the last few years avoiding College Place because there were difficulties with public works and engineering and, and please don't attach my yeah. name to yeah. I'm sharing yeah. that with you that, yeah. that the people just didn't want to work here because it was a fight yeah. over there. Um, so yeah, if you if you if you can if if you can streamline, make stuff lean, make sure that when your city engineers or your planners say this is the process, that they hold to that long term. I, you guys, have, I, I know working with Ed one and working through the whole process with getting you guys on the REA that came up multiple times. Oh, yeah. That uh, so, but it, I'm just sharing that between me and you. Oh, That's yeah. a tough. One. Yeah. It is. I, I mean, I, I get it. There has to be, there's got to be codes, there's got to yeah. be rules, but there has to be a way to get it done faster. And because in that world, time is money. Yep. Getting it built in, in a, in a cost-effective time is what matters to a developer, to be honest. I mean, that's what that's, I mean, I, I deal with the people that are coming to buy the product. When yeah. they're built, you know, I have a contractor that comes in and is going to build a pool barn. The quicker he gets the pool barn done, the more money he makes. Yeah, yeah. Well, the same way with the person building that business, and if they got to fight the whole way to get it done, or they can't be on the job. Well, and it, it's it's surety. It's it, if if you're told this is the process, and this is what you need. That that needs to be a yeah. Don't you can't don't it can't be a moving target either. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and that that was the the pushback from a lot of folks is the, the targets move. Yeah, I, I've always wondered because college place is being scared to grow. Because we haven't really, and, and I don't mind that. I mean, as I've gotten older, my kids are grown now, and, and they're gone, and stuff like that, you know, and a lot of older people live here, and a nice, quiet town, yeah. you know? So you drive to Walla Walla, which you can go anywhere in 10 minutes around here. Um, let them have that. Let us have our quiet town. I think that was some of the mentality 
uh, a lot of residents here. So maybe the city is certainly yeah. that would be as well. well. But, you know, you've got a new high school now. Yeah, I mean, that's... I know, we needed that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, 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 but, and business drives revenue. I yeah, mean, it does. Exactly. It, it, that's what puts tax dollars in the budget, and it's a need. Yep. Uh, but... You know, like I said, these are, I mean, it's funny because these are, you know, a lot of the questions from that survey. Yeah. I'm sure, I don't know if you made those questions up or what, but uh, if you're the one that no, wrote no, it or he the, did, no, that he group did, did but yeah. uh, they ask. And I, I actually am a firm believer that you can have enough balance in bringing in new business and still keep that small time fit, town feel. I think you can do both. There's a line where it's too, you know, it turns into Portland. I yeah. get that. <laughs> but I don't think we're in danger of hitting that line. No. Like that. Uh, so I think that, you know, we we got to make, like he said, the target's got to be the target. Yep. If, if the process says that these are the eight things you're required to get this building done, then it can't be 10 next Monday and it can't be a different eight the Monday after that. Yeah. You just streamline that process, make it inviting for them to come in here, uh, and purchase and purchase that land and, uh, and and grow their business and their company here and and everybody will win I think that you know that's I still go to downtown Walla Walla on the weekends with my wife sometimes and just walk around and hit all the little shops yeah and I think that you know you can get that here and you can have some of the Corporate giants, I hate being called that, by the way, just in case you were wondering. Because <laughs> well, I've worked in big box retail my whole life. I mean, I've been in 27 years this year. So, And, you know, at none of my stores has anybody from our home office ever worked in one. Everybody that works in this Home Depot is from Milton, Free Water, Walla Walla, College Place. Right. My protest associates family has been here 117 years. They're as local as you get. So we're a local that's business, good. too. Oh, that's, that's awesome. We, we need more of that. Yeah. We need jobs around here. You know, who's going to provide it? Businesses. Yep. You know? Business that, that, want, that can survive and want to, right. you know, you keep, it's got to be, I mean, like I said, I understand the rules part. I don't want, you know, yeah. the food service business not to have rules because then everybody's sick. They can't go to yeah. work. Uh, <laughs> so I get it. But I think that it's it's got to be inviting. It's You know, I don't... And I know you've probably heard these because you, you were lived in Chicago yeah. before. But I, I spend time in New York uh, at least twice a year. And if you go to New York City right now, if you turn on a local radio station, you will hear a, the city making public announcements saying, we're going tax breaks to food restaurants and we're, do, we're doing whatever. We're making this an inviting place to open a business. And I think, you know, you got to have something like that to say, yeah. Come in, give us a shot, let's grow together, and you'll enjoy it, and it'll be a great place to call. Yep. Well, we actually are looking at doing a formal promotion campaign on radio, and, I, and the next meeting I'm going to actually show some promotional materials that we're putting together as well, because we'll be going to the ICSC uh, trade show, that retail trade show mm -hmm. in Vegas. To, yeah. Try to get some additional businesses in here as well. Uh, so far, I lose my train of thought on this. So the main thing I'm hearing so far is just uh, uh, with the development review process, just that we need to maintain the standard. The, the eight things are the eight things. Is there is there anything else that, uh, that you've heard at all? I, I haven't. I mean, okay. I just and I, I mean most of. You know, my guys that are coming in every single day, you know, are doing work either up on the hill. I mean, there's a lot going on in Waitsburg. I don't know. I mean, Waitsburg, uh, Biscuit Ridge, that type of area. I mean, there's a lot of remodeling going on up on the hill, but uh, which is great. I mean, I love that area up there, too. I like the way it looks. So, uh, But uh, everybody's working in Walla Walla or, you know, surrounding areas. Mr. Keys out in Milton is always trying to build something. I, I think he's crazy for working at his age, but... They're getting ready to do, uh, the Hayden's getting ready to do your next division mm -hmm. on yeah. the field, so that's good news. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's good news, except that, you know, most of those aren't local jobs. Yeah. They, they bring in their own crews from outside, and they take the money back out with them. But, yeah. but if they're building homes and they're filling them, it just amazes me. I, 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 I'm always shocked to see subdivisions fill up, because I'm like, I don't see businesses. Where are the people coming from? And 
Well, when yeah. that, when, we'll see what happens, but uh, in talking with Mike McKiernan and Craig Christensen that own the property over at College in Lampurdy, they're actually working on doing a master development that could end up with an additional thousand units of housing over there with, with a little bit of a shopping plaza. So. Yeah, there's stuff's happening. <laughs> there's stuff going on there. Yeah. I keep hearing it too. I mean, I'm like, wow. Yeah. And I, I agree with him on Hayden. I know them guys well. So yeah. when they get done messing up houses, we fix them for them. <laughs> <laughs> they, I, it's, it's a business. I get it. They're, they're, they're a cookie cutter company. So their appliances and their services are usually pretty low end. They ship them in in boxes that you can't read the label on. And so I sell a lot of heaters and ACs. <laughs> Okay, uh, just some other things to go over as well. So, state of the city, so mayor will be going over everything that's going on next week. That'll be Tuesday at 6 p.m. And it's just going over all things that have happened and what we are doing. So, and we'll be putting that on Facebook Live as well and recording that. Yeah, Tuesday. So, yeah. yeah, Tuesday at 6. Here? Yeah, yep. Um, additional thing, comprehensive plan, so we are into our update on that, so we're starting the comprehensive plan and update, that'll go till next summer, and a lot of the work that we'll be doing on the tourism strategies and downtown development, as well as urban growth boundary, it'll be in the lot of public workshops, but uh, that's going to be key to development, because one of the things with College Place is we have a very uh, constrained urban growth boundary right now because we're a fully planning jurisdiction uh, because the county is also fully planning. So they tried to restrain where you can grow at. It's basically just a line drawing around the city, but four college places pretty close. So with this comprehensive plan, we're gonna to try to get that extended a bit uh, because right now we're pretty constrained at the moment. Uh, other things, so business recruitment, retention, expansion. Uh, I mentioned the whole uh, McKeeran and Christensen development behind Les Schwab. Uh, there's also a hotel look in the building back there, and we're getting pretty close to finalizing a deal on that, which is pretty exciting. And then uh, behind Home Depot off of uh, Whitman Street, that vacant lot, there's actually two parties looking at that right now. One would be a big box type development with some smaller stores. The other one would be a mixed use. Uh, where it's almost a lifestyle center type development where it would have like a, a main street look with apartments and stuff to it. Uh, what there's some need for that. There's yeah. not, not enough rentals, not enough affordable renters in, in, in these two communities. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, there, there's quite a bit of stuff going on that way. The Connors carpet, they're looking at moving into a newer space in town here, so that is going on as well. And then the folks who were who mentioned the boxcar looking type development. We're working with them over on College Avenue to try to use something a little bit better that matches the street. So that, that um, we're working on. Uh, historic preservation code. So the city right now doesn't have one. And what's been happening is some of the older homes that could be preserved instead get demolished. And the owners, uh, some of the ones I've talked to, they'd be interested in rehabbing if we had like property tax valuation and other things like communities who are Main Street ones have, but we don't right now. But we're moving toward implementing a historic preservation code. And it's optional, it's for uh, business and uh, property owners who want to participate. But if they sign up to be on the historic uh, building registry, they could petition to get a property tax valuation if they fix up their property to meet historic standards. So uh, we're going to be looking at implementing that likely within the next month or so. 
Um, and then uh, the strategic plan. And I, Jay, it sounded like you were participating in one, in one of the ways we're getting input, but uh, we are doing a strategic plan to identify what the city will do the next five to 10 years, because the city uh, had a little bit of a strategic plan from about seven years ago, but it was done very uh, insular. It, there wasn't really much public input to it. So uh, with this current one, we had uh, three public workshops uh, randomly across the community, one in the north end, one south, and one center. Uh, we have the online surveys, and then we'll also have a workshop as well coming up on that, uh, which will really help things because it'll identify what we're doing in the future. So, okay, uh, workshop promoting the workshops. Yep, that's going to be key. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. So you can use Andy's market. Yep, for get the word out on these type of things. You know, so. it, and 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 that's my own people. I mean, you guys are. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and, and that's the plan for stuff coming up where we've been making flyers and trying yeah. to get it out and also getting in social media, the website, the papers. So. You send stuff to me, I'll share it on our Facebook page. Okay. So, yeah. And yep, and I got a bunch of followers on my Twitter account. I got, well, it's a Home Depot one, so everything that happens in the store, we tweet, so we can tweet it at our bosses in Atlanta, and they retweet. And I don't do it. I have one of the youngsters do it for me, to be honest. Uh, they, have, they have my long gone and password, so I make that happen. I make it happen. Uh, I also want to go a little bit over the lodging tax since that's relatively a newer thing for the city. Uh, although not, not so new for folks paying it because they've been paying it, it's just the city hasn't been giving it. Uh, so the City of College Place instituted a lodging tax in January and it has two components. It's uh, your standard 2% hotel tax and then a special hotel motel tax of 2%. It's not new. Uh, actually, I, I found this out in research in this, but if the city doesn't pass a lodging tax, but the county has a lodging they tax. They pay it anyway. It, it, yeah, they pay it anyway, and they get it, and you don't get it. So uh, for the past couple of years, Walla Walla County's been getting it, but City of College Place hasn't been getting it. Mm -hmm. So we passed the ordinance to clean that up. So starting the summer, we actually will be getting it. <laughs> And uh, that can be used to be doing events, marketing, tourism strategies, really help fund the work that we're talking about. Uh, it's anything that gets funded by this is measured by how many tourists hypothetically will be attracted from uh, 50 or more miles. And it's the heads and beds concept, so likelihood that people will stay. Uh, and this commission will have the ability to provide uh, feedback and commentary on proposals that we get for this uh, money. Uh, the Lodge and Tax Advisory Commission, they ultimately make the decision that's tied in that this uh, commission is an advisory body on that. Uh, the first collection of monies will be in the city coffers uh, this July. So there was a bit of like a six month lag after we uh, passed it. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, it's not, but it's. Can the county is, is the county able to give you an idea of what they've been collecting out of <clears throat> city college place area? Uh, I have yet to get that. I've asked for it, so. Uh, uh, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, BR, it's got to be BRB and yeah. B&B. This is all. They're not. They've been, we've been fighting hard to get them all registered and all collected, but they all don't. So. Yeah. yeah uh, from what we're aware of right now, we have about 10 vacation rentals in the community, and then uh, the university has guest rooms. Oh, so. I didn't even think about the university yep. guest rooms. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. That, that, and that should be an easy one. Yep. Okay, so website, this gets in again the word out. So uh, as you can see on the left, we've had the older website through Civics Plus that has the limited functionality and it's been there for the past couple of uh, years. 
Uh, we recently contracted with a company called Revise that does governmental websites and ones where it's actually mobile friendly. So you could pull that up on your cell phone because right now if you go on the city one, they actually have to zoom in and do other things because it won't fit on your phone. Uh, so uh, to the right, that's mock-ups of what it's ultimately going to look like, and we're developing the pages right now. But we're really trying to get an interactive presence for the city. Uh, this will have a business portal. It'll be uh, released by uh, May. I'm hoping for sooner. Uh, we're going to have uh, quite a bit of things on business portal, so demographic data and expenditure data, things like that, available land uh, and sites, uh, local state and federal resources, an uh, overview of our development process, which is in several places right now because on the old website, it was uh, segregated by how the city was laid out and not so much like how the developer would see it, so we'll change it with the new website. And key agency contacts. Uh, beyond that, is there anything else you could think of that we should be including on this? <laughs> yeah, the biggest, the biggest thing I think that's that's on there that makes it is is, is con is easily searchable contact information for all the city employees and all the things you're going to need. We have the, the agencies, you know, the offices, but yeah. So so how, you know when when they're looking for you, how they get a hold of you. When they're looking for public works, how do they find Paul? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, here's if you, if you need utilities, here's the utility contacts. If you need garbage, here's garbage. I mean, just those sort of things. When when a city makes it hard to find that stuff, it drives. When anybody makes it hard to find that stuff, it drives me nuts. Yeah. So. Well, that, that's something that maybe think about and let me know as you're thinking about if there's anything else we need to throw on this, because uh, I've been really trying to emphasize the advice that I want this thing live sooner and later, because the current yeah. website's just bad. So... <laughs> okay, uh, so I included some uh, example information in the in the packets, uh, but this is something else to notify this body about. So a couple weeks ago, the city contracted with a company called Boston uh, to provide economic development services, and they basically provide data analytics on uh, the various uh, types of folks that live in, in your area and expenditure patterns and things like that. And they provide market validation, so basically what your market will support and what types of businesses. It even goes uh, directly into brands. Uh, there's some sample reports in the packet. Uh, Buxton is actually providing market validation report and they'll say what additional types of businesses as well as even chains will fit into uh, the regional economy here into College Place. That validation report, they're actually going to present that to us tomorrow. Uh, and once uh, we're receiving the ad and look it over, we'll uh, present the findings in the next meeting of this body. But yeah, there's an example uh, data report in the packet. If that is helpful or if there's additional things you're wondering that they could provide, please let us know. I actually just got that from my store. We, we have something very similar to that in Vegas. They, you key in your store number and it gives you what type of shoppers out there. Yeah. They're doing it off of everything now, man. Cell phone pings, like it'll tell me. It tells, it, it, they can, technology's getting way out there. They, if they use their cell phone in the store and then use it somewhere else, it tells you where they went. So you can, they roadmap them. Yep. Like where are they going from their store? Like they can, if, and mine is simple. They hit me and then Walmart or Walmart and then me. Yep. <laughs> well, that this map application's real neat because it even has a, uh, 
colored by household, like which household fits into what price point and what demographic. And uh, we can print these reports and uh, type them up for various types of stores or even locations. So if you are interested in there, you know, businesses and college place that uh, would be let me know and we can run the various reports. So it's a pretty powerful tool. And we signed a three-year contract with them. So. Okay, so I wanted to at least start this discussion uh, tonight and we could further refine these ideas later. So uh, from the outreach that's been conducted with the strategic plan and the online surveys, a common comment that's being called out is that College Place needs to have events or something to draw visitors and tourists because uh, a lot of folks have expressed uh, where they're a little bit irked at the fact that a lot of the events are in Walla Walla and we have the tree light them, but from what I've been able to tell, at least from a city downtown level outside the university, that's basically it for events. Uh, so I listed some potential ones uh, that we did actually back in uh, Colfax because a similar issue over there. So we ended up having a monthly uh, farmers market and then we had a first Thursday event where we basically had uh, bands and we themed it and uh, we also had a summer community event that had like a parade and uh, other functions to get people into the city. Uh, so with that I was just wondering what your thoughts are on maybe what uh, the demographics here would support their what ideas to uh, have events here in the city. I'll give you one idea that, that I think you could run with. So Allegro in Walla Walla has a cycling race team and they want to, this summer they really like to start a crit, so a, a down, another downtown race event. You guys have got beautiful roads right now. Walla Walla University has a cycling team you know, those things can draw hundreds and hundreds of cyclists. They'll hang around downtown, if, you know, they'll buy the coffee, they'll buy sandwiches. Um, and, and again, with these new roads, just being perfect, because there aren't good roads or easily usable roads in Walla Walla. And, and, and yeah. <laughs> and the, and the, the last, the last weather, or, or the, our last winter was, rough on all of them everywhere. Yeah. Well, I tell you, we had used to have here at Lions Park a pretty good 4th of July event. And I don't know what the heck happened to it, but it, it just went. It, it, I mean, I went there every year. The park was packed. We had good vendors in there. We had, it was, it was happening. I mean, it was really good. They had a firewood show. So that certainly needs to come back or something. I mean, we could use Lions Park. That's really our main park. And that's yeah, a, that's a nice park. Parts. Yeah, um, and that was one thing that uh, certainly, and, and what about the uh, Veterans Day, that was Veterans Day, that went away. I mean, that was pretty cool because all the businesses had, you know, I mean, we had, we had a lot of people coming out to that. That's the kind of stuff that you want community involvement and stuff, okay, the cycling thing, that's a, that's, yeah. that's a great event. Uh, that Veterans Day thing, the, using the park for, for events and stuff like that. Um, like you had a summer community event. Great idea, you know. Um, I actually even like the farmer's market thing too. I mean, somewhere in there, but I just don't know, you know, what, it, what, would, it, what would it look like versus, I mean, I see there's sometimes during the Walla Walla farmer's market when it's pretty pretty hopping down there. So, yeah. I, mean, I, think, I mean, I know I still yeah. buy all my vegetables that I can't grow from somebody who's grown them rather than, I mean, yeah. Something tastes different about a tomato that was grown in the backyard, so. Okay. Yeah, you got, I don't have the ideas to use them, but the, the new high school got beautiful outdoor facilities. I mean, that's true, yeah. Got to be a way, that, yeah. yeah, to tap into that, to do something there. I mean, this, this winter being the exception, normally by now, and things are blooming and beautiful and it's nice outside and you know yeah get get, get people out there on those yeah. fields doing something is is the high school like open to the community to use for anything or like can people go out and use their tennis courts per se or 
you know, is it accessible Just for the public? To call it. I know the Talk other. To. I mean, they, they, I, I have called. Sir. Yeah, I don't. I don't know the answer to that, but I know. Yeah. You know, I, I work with the president of the school board. I know the superintendent. I know the principal. Everything I've heard from them is if they want to be involved. They want to do good things. They want to participate. They want to. So I mean, it sounds like the right, they're all in. Yeah, you got the right leadership team yeah. over there to, to make things happen. Um, you know, they're, if they got any concerns, they'll be you know making sure they're covered for liability. Yeah, but damage, I, I mean, but. like a Fourth of July picnic at the park event would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah because because the wall wall one is know. way overcrowded. Yeah. I mean, you. you I've stopped going to the Walla Walla Fourth of July in the park because it is such a zoo, so crowded and so nuts that it's just not fun anymore. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we did something like that in Colfax because uh, the Pullman Fourth of July got too packed. And uh, except what we did is we ended up having it like a week later so we could get a discount on the fire for us. And uh, we called it Concrete River Festival and we had a run in the river and fireworks and a lot of vendors and things like that. From what I can tell, look at the city documentation, it looked like, I don't know if maybe this was the same event or a different event, but it looked like at some point in time there was something called Fun Days on the Fun Days, I think they went to uh, That's what That's what you're talking oh. about. Oh, it was It was never Fourth of July, but it was right close. Yeah. Because they didn't want to directly compete with Walla Walla. But, yeah, um, yeah it, it ran for several years. It did, yeah. Uh, really, probably what shut it down more than anything was um, neighborhood complaints about the firework refuge mm -hmm. and the fire and the fire department's concern about fire. Yeah. Uh, but I don't see why we couldn't have something that wasn't similar or used only ground fireworks mm -hmm. in the park mm -hmm. itself. It was those high aerials that caused the problem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of, that's a huge housing district now. Yeah. I mean, that used to be all onion fields when I moved here. Mm. All that. Wow. All onion fields. Well, that's, you know, I start to say that about sweet onions. You know, my perception is most of the sweet onions that Walla Walla wants to claim are grown in College Place. place. So, I know, we buy a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, that's, I've said that for years, way yeah. back in my Walmart days. I'm like, I'm going to College Place to get a Walla Walla Suite. Yeah, yeah. so I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's a, a, a tough switch, yeah. but but that, that's been my perception huh. is, you know, that's the same problem you guys got with Walla Walla University and College yeah. Place. Yeah. It's, just, it, 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 it's a struggle. I, I, don't know how, I don't know the answer, but... I don't think mean, there is one for that. Yeah. But anyway, it was great, and it got better every year. Huh. You know, I mean, I mean they close out with musical acts. Yeah, and, yeah, they and do. And so there, there's a lot of things that could draw mm -hmm. that don't involve don't involve the stuff that caused the problem, which was the hair yeah. Um, the people get out. And yeah. also tying in, we're looking at um, cleaning up that pond there. Um, because the kids fish there and stuff like that. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that, it, it wouldn't have to be just one event per summer. We might be able to have two or three. Yeah, exactly. Because what I would like to get us to is, in Colfax, we at least tried to do like one big event a quarter. Mm -hmm. And then as it gained steam, we increased the... Yeah. Uh, well, the community that plays together stays together. Yeah. Okay. And the town, this whole place is starving for entertainment. I've said that for years. So if we can get some events going, it would be a big plus all the way around for everyone. I know people would come. Well, I think it, you're, I, I, I don't think of it as a competition thing. I think it's a timing thing, of course. But I just look at like the you know like the parade down Walla Walla Main Street for the holidays and all that they already that they currently have. You know, there were tons of groups from College Place to participate in that. And I think you would get tons of groups from there to participate in one if you had a parade down College Avenue uh, doing the same, you know, exact thing. Maybe not, of course, not the same time. But I think that there's a there's a balance there that could be met where you where everybody wins. Fun days grew from the whole valley. Yeah. 
it wasn't just college place constituency. Yeah. It drew from all over. Yeah, if something's cool, yeah. people will come and check it out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like Jeff said earlier, everything's 10 minutes away at that matter. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, you just, you, yeah, and, and find, find, the, find the weekends that are available, mm -hmm. you know. And that's what's, you know, I, I moved here and I hear people complain, oh, there's not enough to do. And I think, as I've lived here, you know, almost a decade now, it's, Maybe not enough to do for teenagers sometimes. Man, every single weekend there's something going on, and then you you got to say no to something because you're going to something else. So um, you just got to find the smart weekends, the smart ways to fill them in. And yeah. Not, yeah. I do see a lot of families coming. Those housing districts are getting filled with families. Yeah. Okay. They got kids. They need something to do with the kids. You know. That's why that high school. Is there, you know, we take uh, the Duck Derby, we take plants out there. We've taken plants out there. We do, you know, clear cups so the kids can see it. We put rocks in the bottom, a little bit of sand, peat moss, and put a, a plant in it, water it for them. And, and three years ago, just at the Duck Derby, and then it's, what is it called? Kids Night Out in Pioneer Park? Is that what it's called? Kids? First Night Out? Kids Night Out? National Night Out. National Night Out, that's it. Yeah. So, uh, Three years ago, a lot, you know, four or five hundred plants. I mean, this year, Duck Derby, almost a thousand. A thousand kids. You know, National Night Out, I think, was 980. National Night Out, I'm, again, well, and it's, it, people are giving away free stuff, and free stuff brings people out. It doesn't have to be expensive free stuff, just free stuff brings people out. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, National Night Out, you know, we alternate back and forth. We do one year in, Dayton, we do one year in Walla Walla, and they're both busy, and they're both. Uh, Our new police chief, he's actually looking at potentially getting a national night out and going here inside college plays. Well, then I'll go one every three years. I'll be good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll just bounce back and forth. Well, I'm lucky. I got 150 people to work with me, so I could send five every direction. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have not that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 50. I only have one safety table. <laughs> as far as the uh, yeah, fun days, who, what agency was the one that used to run it? It was the city. Also, oh, was the city? There's probably still a lot of data oh. on that on the server. Okay. I'll take a look at that. that long ago. I was at the Okay, well, I'll look. That's good ideas if you have any more, let me know. But yeah, I'll try to uh, work it, getting stuff, or find some we could start having uh, more events go on here in college place. Okay, so that is really items uh, I want to go over uh, this meeting. So the next meeting will be the April 26th one. Uh, some items that we'll discuss, uh, that market validation study as far as what fits in here. Uh, also, what results from the city council retreat on the strategic plan. Uh, they'll be meeting in uh, mid-April, and definitely from what I've seen so far in the survey responses, a lot of what we've been discussing about the events, economic development, there's a strong nexus there. Uh, also, guidance on retailers to target, because uh, I'm part of the uh, Port of Walla Walla Alliance that's going over to the International Council on Shopping Centers Conference in Vegas in May, so ones that we should concentrate on getting into the city. Uh, further delve into the events that we need to get going here, so I'll do some research on uh, what we just discussed, and then uh, begin a swab analysis, because we want to do an uh, economic development plan moving this city forward. And then the last item was something that just got on my radar yesterday. Uh, I went to a CDBG workshop, so uh, that's Community Development Block Grant, and they actually have some micro enterprise money available uh, to where cities could help sponsor doing storefront improvement grants and then loans to get small businesses started, but it has to be in census tracts where the lower moderate income is basically 51% uh, or above. And it just so happens that the census tract 
uh, the College Avenue is in from Whitman Drive down to 12th Street uh, fits in right now. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to try to draft up something for review by this body because the call for projects for the state CDBG grant is June and we want to try to get something in on that uh, because that this may be the last time they issue the CDBG grant based on what President Trump does. So there's a lot of people trying to get the last of the money out of the program. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, thank you. That's all I have for you today. Question, if I can't be here next month, you yeah. want to try some of my coworkers yeah, like Doug yeah, Chase? Yeah, that'd be great. Yep. I'll see if I can